Hestadanorum, Hestadanorum, Deeds of the Danes, is a patriotic work of Danish history, by the 13th century author Saxo Grammaticus, Saxo the Literate, literally the Grammarian. It is the most ambitious literary undertaking of medieval Denmark and is an essential source for the nation's early history. It is also one of the oldest known written documents about the history of Estonia and Latvia. Consisting of 16 books written in Latin on the invitation of Archbishop Absalon, Hestidanorum describes Danish history and to some degree Scandinavian history in general, from prehistory to the late 12th century. In addition, Hestidanorum offers singular reflections on European affairs in the High Middle Ages from a unique Scandinavian perspective, supplementing what has been handed down by historians from Western and Southern Europe. The 16 books, in prose with an occasional excursion into poetry, can be categorized into two parts, books 1 to 9, which deal with Norse mythology, and books 10 to 16, which deal with medieval history. Book 9 ends with Gorm the Old, the first factual documented king of Denmark. The last three books, 14 to 16, which describe Danish conquests on the south shore of the Baltic Sea and wars against Slavic peoples, the Northern Crusades, are very valuable for the history of West Slavic tribes, Palabian Slavs, Pomeranians, and Slavic paganism. Book 14 contains a unique description of the temple in the island of Rugen. When exactly Hesta Danorum was written is the subject of numerous works, however, it is generally agreed that Hesta Danorum was not finished before 1208. The last event described in the last book, Book 16, is King Canute VI of Denmark subduing Pomerania under Duke Bajislaw I, in 1186. However, the preface of the work, dictated to Archbishop Anders Sundsen, mentions the Danish conquest of the areas north of the Elbe in 1208. Book 14, comprising nearly one quarter of the text of the entire work, ends with Absalon's appointment to Archbishop in 1178. Since this book is so large and Absalon has greater importance than King Valdemar I, this book may have been written first and comprised a work on its own. It is possible that Saxo then enlarged it with books 15 and 16 telling the story of King Valdemar I's last years and King Canute VI's first years. It is believed that Saxo then wrote books 11, 12, and 13. Sven Augustin's History of Denmark, Brevis Historia Regum Daisy, circa 1186, states that Saxo had decided to write about the king father and his sons, which would be King Sven Estridsen, in books 11, 12, and 13. He would later add the first 10 books. This would also explain the 22 years between the last event described in the last book, Book 16, and the 1208 event described in the, the preface. The original manuscripts of the work are lost, except for four fragments, the Angers fragment, Lawson fragment, Carl Rasmussen fragment and Plesner fragment. The Angers fragment is the biggest fragment, and the only one attested to be in Saxo's own handwriting. The other ones are copies from CA.1275. All four fragments are in the collection of the Danish Royal Library in Copenhagen, Denmark. The text has, however, survived. In 1510-1512, Christian Pedersen, a Danish translator working in Paris, searched Denmark high and low for an existing copy of Saxo's works, which by that time was nearly all but lost. By that time most knowledge of Saxo's work came from a summary located in Chronica Jutensis, from around 1342 called Compendium Saxonis. It is also in this summary that the name Hesta Danorum is found out the title Saxo himself used for his work is unknown. Christian Pedersen finally found a copy in the collection of Archbishop Birger Gunnarsson of Lund, Skona. Skona is now part of Sweden, but at the time was still part of Denmark, which he gladly lent him. With the help of printer Jodicus Badius, Hesta Danorum was refined and printed. The first printed press publication and the oldest known complete text of Saxo's works is Christian Pedersen's Latin edition, printed and published by Jodicus Badius in Paris, France on March 15, 1514 under the title of Danorum Regum Harum Castoriae, History of the Kings and Heroes of the Danes. The edition features the following colophon, impressed in Inclida Paris or Academia Iodicus Badius Essentia City Bus Marchi Staten Chai. Supitationi Romana. The Ides of March, 1514. The full front page reads, with abbreviations expanded, in Latin, Danorum Regum Harum Castoriae Stalo Elegantia Saxony Grammatico Nationsialandico Necnon Ross Kildensis Ecclesia Pri Posito, 
of hinc supertricentas on os conscripti et nung primum literaria seria lustridi tercisimec impressi. Danish language, de densky kongisho g heltsistwar, screvit i pintelig still for over 300 r sin af saxo grammaticus, en schellens for og pervsped kirken i ruskala, og nu for first to gang oplisbed it register og omegalic trike. English language, histories of the kings and heroes of the Danes, composed in elegant style by Saxo Grammaticus, a Zealander and also provost of the Church of Ruskala, over 300 years ago, and now for the first time illustrated and printed correctly in a learned compilation. The source of all existing translations and new editions is Christian Pedersen's Latin Danorum Regum Harum Castoriae. There exist a number of different translations today, some complete, some partial. Hesta Danorum is also translated partially in other English, French and German releases. The book begins when the sons of Humble, Dan and Ongul of the Fountain are ruling over the country, not as kings, but as governors. The area ruled by Ongul became known as Anglia, while the area ruled by Dan gained the name Denmark, Denmark in Danish. The Teutonic wife of Dan, Gritha bears him the sons, Humble and Lothar. Saxo explains that the Danes would elect their king by casting a vote while standing on a stone planted on the ground. With that kind of ceremony, humble Danes and is elected to succeed his father. However, his brother did not accept the result and faced a successful war against him, thus, humble was forced to abdicate and happily retired into a cabin. Lothar Danson proved himself to be a tyrant and was killed while fighting the rebels. Lothar is succeeded by his son, Skiad, who has his father's capability but not his inborn perversity. Saxa remarks that as a young man, Skiad was renowned hunter, going as far as to bind a large bear that caught him spearless. Not limited to bears, Skiad was a great fighter, winning fights against his renowned champions, such as Atal. At the age of 15 Skiad was extraordinarily large. For the Danes he was perfect, hence many future kings of the Danes took the title Skialdung, honoring him. Skiad takes interest in beautiful Alfhild. The daughter of the king of the Saxons. However, another suitor of Alfhild, Scott, the governor of Almania, challenges Skiad to a duel. Skiad slays Scott in that duel and thus subjugates Almania. Later, Skiad makes manumissions illegal after one of his released slaves tried to murder him. After marrying Skiad, Alfhild gives birth to a son, Graham, who inherits the virtues of his father. Graham grows up to be talented, as highlighted by many poems made after his death. He marries his foster sister, Broer, but after a while, he finds her strenuous and gives her to a man known as Bess. Graham invades Sweden after hearing that Groa, daughter of Sigtrig, the king of the Swedes, has been promised to a giant. While riding through Jutland, Graham disguises himself as a giant and comes across Groa and her band of women. After revealing his disguise, Groa agrees to marry Graham. However, Bess is hateful towards the Swedes and convinces Graham to continue the war. Graham slays Sigtrig and takes over his kingdom. Certain aspects of Hesta Danorum form the basis for William Shakespeare's play Hamlet. It is thought that Shakespeare never read Hesta Danorum, and instead had access to an auxiliary version of the tale describing the downfall of the Prince of Denmark, whose real name, Amleth, was used in Anagram B. Shakespeare for Hamlet. Saxo's version, told of in books 3 and 4, is very similar to that of Shakespeare's Hamlet. In Saxo's version, two brothers, Orvindel and Fingy are given feral over Jutland by King Rorik's Lynchbond at the Danes. Soon after, Orvindel marries King Rorik's daughter, Jeroth, Gertrude in Hamlet. Amleth is their first and only child. Fengi becomes resentful of his brother's marriage, and also wants sole leadership of Jutland, so therefore murders Orvindel. After a very brief period of mourning, Fengi marries Jeroth, and declares himself sole leader of Jutland. Eventually, Amleth avenges his father's murder and plans the murder of his uncle, making him the new and rightful king of Jutland. However, while Hamlet dies in Shakespeare's version just after his uncle's death, in Saxo's version Amleth survives and begins ruling his kingdom, going on to other adventures. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.